afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this intimate um, time together, despite the fact that it is freezing and hailing outside. Um, we've come to the end of our very first week um, engaging at the Commission for Social Development to share STEAM and empowerment, promoting poverty eradication, social, social integration, and decent work and employment for all. And we have two very special delegates who have come from very far to um, who will share a bit this afternoon uh, with us about their, their projects at home. So um, I'd like to introduce Sophie, who is the Executive Director for the Cambodian Organization for Research, Development, and Education in Western Cambodia and Bottom Good afternoon, friends. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here share and learn from the commission. Uh, we are, well, I'm not in the expert in this field or the policy makers in the, of the, 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 in this, uh, what we call uh, empowerment and all. But I just would like to share what our organization have been doing in the, to empower the young people in Cambodia for social transformation. Uh, if we go back to the past, in that Cambodians have gone through a very hard time. It's the civil war, and and all these educated people, professors, and all they have to leave the country, or else we will be killed by the by the people there. So after this long back history, uh, the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia settled in Cambodia, and things have started to to uh, develop. And Kode was one of the most uh, one of the one one of the few NGOs established in Cambodia to address the issue and of this uh, community building. Kode was, uh, Kode was uh, starting in the, in the aim at to, in the, in the aim of uh, bringing the awareness of the importance of education to the, to the people. Uh, after they, after we see that they are, you know, the country has been uh, collapsed because of the all the system also collapsed and, and educated people also not there and so we thought that education is very important that to address the issue and uh, have to build their capacity so that they can also the people can continue doing the work after you know, the, uh, replacing or building the community again. Okay. How there is a learning organization. We are learning by doing the action. The action statement of Kode provide the framework for its learning in action. It is rooted in two fundamental principles of oneness of humanity and nobility of humankind. Kode works with village youth in building their capacity to empower themselves for social transformation. How the experience has been building capacity in youth to be a promoter of community value through the preparation for social action program. This preparation for social action program is oriented towards a vision of twofold empowerment of individuals to advance to advance in the, in, in the development of their capability and of society to carry forward and advance in civilization. So the program has different textbooks and in different text, the, in, in each of the textbooks address different issues. So some of the textbooks talk about environmental issues. Some of the texts address about uh, learning to 
uh, reading the reading the community, understanding the community where we live mm, and the neighborhood where who we are kind of. And all this textbook is centered around the service project. So it, all the student, the participant who study who study the book has to apply in the community where they live. So everything has to be with uh, study and action have to have to happen. So like I think in we can see maybe the photo will show that uh, some of the activity that uh, it will take uh, it will be, it will give us a picture of how for example like the, the youth are also involving inviting people or inviting other youth to come and taking part of the helping others helping the community. <coughs> Like, like this man, he has to land because be empty. And after, because of some of the text of the program has addressed about this uh, in agriculture and using the fertilizer, appropriate technology, uh, and all that. So he start, he, he never do anything for his for his piece of land. So now, after gone through it, he started planting something for the on his land, on his own land, and. So that he he by by following the and by what we he understand from the text and uh, using this appropriate technology, so he learn and he he apply, he apply in his own. And also the youth has also gather, talk to other youths in the community, even the you can see the monks there they also in the pro in involved that they do a project of cleaning the village. That a lot of uh, garbage and all, so they have this, and it's it's always continuous. It's always a continuum like happen most of uh, most every year that is happen the program, and it's, it's it's coming by itself that like this year we do it, and next year they are the one who plan to do it. So in the first place, we are the, we are the one as the institution helping them to to understand the issue, to address the issue, and they involved in the process. So next year, they are the one who raise up the problem and they start doing by themselves. So we, are, we only just, well, we only just to watch over them and see and learn with them, go alongside. And also the youth also, they are, they are also teaching children and also the adolescents. Uh, and that the, the children and this the children in their children class also become their follow their their, their example as teachers, and they also become their teachers or animators in their communities. Certain textbook is also uh, giving thought or helping the participant to understand about this uh, self self uh, self support. For example, they have to think of uh, not going to work in the city, but rather than to look for opportunity in the community and start up a small business. So instead of uh, well, we are not. Uh, instead of building their capacity so that they can they can work, but we are building their capacity that they can serve in the community. Uh, so, and this picture is also addressing this. Uh, they are they are giving uh, bringing the awareness of this burning uh, plastic bag. It's an environmental problem issue, and it's, it's and the people are involving is students in the school, the government school, and the people, the communities also taking, participate in the <coughs> workshops here. So, uh, the effort that carry out in a learning mode, characterized by the constant action, reflection, 
consultation and study, the youth empower themselves and their villages. Building their capacity so that they are not just a labor, labor for others. They are not just work for others, but especially migrant to work in other country. Uh, in Cambodia, the youth are, are really, we cannot, most, I mean, most in the rural area, we, we could not find youth because they have to work, they have to go out of the country to work in Thailand or Malaysia or Korea. And what, and their works are, is all like working in the factories or other heavy things. It's all a, it's all a kind of labor work. Uh, in Korea, they, some of them work in agriculture field. Again, they have land there and they let, their parents have plenty of land and they don't do anything and they go to work for others in the field, in the same field that they can do here also in Cambodia. So, so what we are doing is we try to try we try to build up the capacity of this youth so that they can promote the universal participation in their village and consultation as a tool for collective decision making. And through the cons through the constant action, reflection, consultation, and study is. And study that is empowering for them to take ownership to determine their own path of development. And that one we do, we reflect, we act, we, 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 we do, and we consult and we reflect on what we are doing. Again, we apply and we study some of the texts that guiding us is like the guiding principle. And then we apply again. So these are the, and that we of that we, we ourselves also learn and they also learn and we all both empower, empower by, this, uh, const by this constant activity that we are doing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I luckily had the pleasure of visiting Corday about a year ago and it was just so inspiring to see this, you know, learning and action process and seeing these youth who are just uplifted by the education that they're able to receive from this incredible program. So thank you, thank you for sharing. And now to Ms. Therese to share with us about um, her work with the SAT program at the Bayan Association in Honduras. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. It's really a pleasure to see familiar faces. <laughs> it makes it easier to talk. This is my first experience, so bear with me. Um, I'd like to share a little bit of what Bayan is doing and um, what we feel is being productive in what the work that we're doing. I'd like to start talking a little bit about Bayan, what it is, what it does, um, and the SAT program what that is and what are the projects that we feel are actually having um, positive um, impact on this society. So, Bayan, what is Bayan? Bayan is a non-organization, non-governmental organization that was actually born in Honduras. Um, and it started off basically through an initiative of service to humanity by two families, the Smiths and Sabri Poor. They had read a letter encouraging the Baha'is to serve humanity. And consulting as family, they started looking around the world for a place to go and serve. At that time, they were living in the US with their family. And um, a friend told them about Honduras and the conditions in Honduras. 
which is a country that suffers poverty in most of the rural areas. Um, this has been over 30 years ago, where there were communities that didn't have running water, that children suffered from common diseases like malaria, dysentery, and um, these kind of uh, conditions. And the education service, really, most of the rural areas had access only to primary schools and nothing beyond that. And most of the population in the Honduran um, rural areas don't have access to secondary education because of economic restraints. Um, young girls stay home to take care of their siblings and while mother and father you know, go off to try and find um, bread and butter kind of situation. So that's how Bayan started. They actually started with a hospital because of the health condition that was in the Mosquitias, which is the farthest people feel, you know, when you're in Honduras to get to any place. But working with the hospital and um, people coming, they were serving, really, people were quite pleased to have that service because it offered um, care and health care to families that have been dying in some cases because they couldn't really get to the nearest hospital because of the, there are no roads and, and transportation were really difficult. But then they thought that it wasn't enough because, you know, being involved in, in, in community work and looking around and what was going on, um, it was impossible for them to to meet all of the needs that were around. And so they started thinking um, of ways of helping people to help themselves. That's how Bayan actually got into SAP and um, heard about this SAP program, which um, was going on and developed by Fundaec in Colombia. They went to Colombia and um, visited some of the SAP programs and from these visits um, they had people from Fundai come to Honduras and um, shared experience and eventually they sent youths from Honduras from the Mosquitia area to study in Colombia with Fundai and these youths eventually came back to Honduras and started being a part of the SAP program. Um, what does the what what is the focus and the purpose of, of SAT? What is it built upon? It's actually um, this belief in the capacity of the individual to make the decisions for him herself and to shape their lives, communities and institutions. So Bayan, through SAT, is working to contribute to the development of the capacities of these three actors, individuals, institutions, and communities. How do we do that? The program, the, the Bayan, the SAT program, when it started, um, started in the Mosquitias, and it was run by Bayan. wasn't recognized, it didn't have any conventions um, in terms of the law or with the education department or ministry of education, it wasn't recognized. But Bayan continued to work, and after some years, presented the fruits of its labor to the Ministry of Education in Honduras. It
it was really difficult in the beginning, but with persistence, patience, loving consultation, eventually Bayan got a convention um, signed uh, with the ministry, the secretary of uh, education in Honduras, and that opened doors that today the SAT program is in 80, in 12 of 18 departments of Honduras. It is the only um, non-formal, as it was thought of at that time, um, or alternative program that is now observed by the government. It is now a formal program, educational program. And most recently, I believe there might be some of you that knows of Erin uh, Murphy, who did a study on SAT. And um, she was in Honduras about a couple of months ago and shared her, her research on the program. And that has really brought um, attention to SAT even more because of the, the impact that, is, that it has and there are further negotiations and consultation between the minister, the, the present minister of education with Bayan to um, expand that, to take it even further. And um, some other, other issues that they want to look at. Uh, but in, in, in the words of the, the minister of education, which was really moving to many, and that has called a lot of attention is saying, I want some in all of Honduras, you know? So what are some of the actions um, that we are taking for the building of these capacities in individuals and uh, institutions and the community? I won't I don't want to go into too many details of, you know, all the things that we're doing. I just want to concentrate um, on, on two or three of the activities that we are carrying out. And that shows how empowerment works for us or how we feel that we're contributing to empowerment. Um, as we're seeing in the areas, in the rural areas, in Honduras, most of the youths did not have access to education until SAT got there. And parents, students, communities expresses their pleasure, their relief to have had this opportunity and that has translated into progress in the community in that after all these years, we are now having students who graduated from SAT that, have, that are continuing their higher studies or may have completed their higher studies and are now the tutors in their own community. I believe that seeing that, we could say we are empowering people. Communities are growing. It's contributing to the rise of self-esteem, of people giving back, of creating, of taking decisions for their own growth, for their own community, and deciding their path. But they could now do that because they have a base, which is education, and education um, with quality, one that focuses on anal analyzing, you know, it's not only memorizing, which is one of the things that um, is a concern of many that are into the, in, in the educational field in some of our countries, that education has become more of memorizing and not really working on analyzing and engaging in, in, in activities and, and the thinking process and, and the planning process. And SAT tries to do that because 
Um, we see SAT as an educational program. Um, we see it more as a vehicle to an end, and that end is development, community development. So it's an innovative, interactive, we try for SAT to be a creative way of, of becoming educated, but with the center um, being service to humanity, to making a better place to live, you know, on a local level as much as possible. So that is one thing that we could say that, you know, I, we could see empowerment through working with the local people and having them being prepared serve their own community so that we don't have to be the ones to be there or it doesn't always have to be others from the outside but that the people on the ground be the ones to, to serve their own communities. By what means do we do that? Um, okay. I think we could say the interaction um, between the three parts or the three protagonists, individual, community, and institution. We strive to have this interaction using consultation as the tool, talking about what is going on in the community um, sharing ideas of between students, parents of uh, students, and other members of the community, and tutors, um, assessors, and coordinators who we could think of as the administrators of, of education, the, the, the field actors. The other point uh, is the active participation or the stimulation of the active participation of parents in the SAT program. In traditionally, parents in the school system are thought of as participants when they find money to fund certain projects. We're going to fix a window. We need uh, a table. We need, we need uh, a board. We need materials. So um, parents have been called upon and they need to meet and they need to find how they're going to fill those needs. So strive to go beyond that. That is important. And um, we, we do try to, to it's, it's open for, um, for parents to do that, they're encouraged to, to participate in that way. But because SAT focuses on the development of communities, we strive to, to do that through a collective education. Um, and so the parents are seen and attended in a way of, uh, I guess we could say, popular education but that they are also part of a process of learning because most of the parents in the communities um, don't know how to read, don't know how to write, um, they haven't gone to primary school, or if they have, they didn't really have a high school education. So SAT tried to, um, through community projects carried out by the students, um, Parents become, how do you say, alphabetized? Is that what it is, the word? Where they are taught to read and write? There is a word that I... Literacy. Literacy. Okay, that. Um, the SAT pro... And this is really integrated into the SAT curriculum. All students at, in, in their first year and second year have this as a part of their project, a service to community. They K 
carry out literacy program and there is a, a, a one of the texts is actually on how to work with adults um, for literacy and there are other community projects that is part of this whole, as, as I said, the service is the center of the SAP curriculum. There are five um, five capacities. There are five capacities. Um, it is mathematics, a technology, technology, yes, technology. Um, Mathematica, Tecnologia, I have to say it in Spanish and then in English. <laughs> Ciencia, science. Mm. There is one more. No, no. It's it's really, the, the, the structure of the SAP curriculum is innovative. It's quite different. Even Honduras is having its share to get it into, um, locking into the system, the, the educational system, but that is well in process, you know, but I forgot the other one. When I remember, I'll tell you, but pardon? That is a part of, uh, of technology, of technology. Yeah, it's quite, quite interesting. You know, when, when you say Mathematica, you also look into how do we build? You learn mathematics through building, through measuring, um, when, when, you're, when the students are out in the field, tilling the ground is what you say, tilling ground for, to plant, that's where they're also learning how to mathematics, algebra, and all these other things. It's all integrated. That is the way that it's been. But the service to humanity, service to the community is really at the heart of um, the SAT program, as I said, you know, because it's it's really for development. It's really for the development of community. So everything that we learn is to be put into practice to serve and to better the life of the people in our community. And so parents, the, the tutors are the ones that we, we would say teachers, you know, but we say tutors because of um, the, the system the way the philosophy and the, the, the way that the SAP program works, they are also charged with, it, it's not, no, I shouldn't say charged because it sounds like it's really impulsive. Uh, I am, how do you say that it's really imposed? But that's not it. It's, it's basically that they're encouraged to work with parents and there are programs set out that they could do and certain steps that are being laid out or a, um, guidelines of how to do that. So it's really encouraged to build that kind of uh, a relationship with the parents and to, through this relationship building with, between tutor and, and parent, you know, we think that it brings community together as well. It fosters working together um, between, between age groups, even crossing age groups, children with their parents, elderly and, and adults with, with young people. And we have a few, ex, um, we have a few, do we have a photo? Did you get that? Okay. Um, there are a few examples with how that works. Um, for instance, the, there are various projects that are carried carried on, like complementary projects to SAP is another way that we we try to empower, is attending to the needs that comes from the community that, you know, through the, pro that the process that we're being involved with is our guide to what we need to do. You know, what projects are we going to do? It's being defined by the process that each group or the center goes through. So there are a few, these projects, I just want to name two at this point. One has to do with the promotion of intercultural living together and children's rights. And there is also another that um, there are community banks. And in these projects, it's addressing the issue of um, community economy 
and the other bringing people together in solidarity how do we get to respect each other you know how how do how do we translate respect to, for each other in our own lives you know how do we learn to work together even when we might come from different cultures we have different ways of thinking um, so this 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 is what these projects do and what that has has the effect or impact of that we have seen communities um, reflecting more on issues like discrimination um, like how can addressing and creating ways of working together and eliminating some of the problems that are in their communities. So in any, um, just to say how or what I think from this experience are some of the keys to empowerment is starting small, like we saw with Diane, starting in the Mosquitia and eventually growing. It has to do with networking, you know, meeting others that have shared goals and even when, um, and finding those resources and people who could help and to be persistent because there are times that when you go for the first time saying hey this is what i'm doing can you help or could we do something more and they say no we, we we're not interested you know but it's to come back again so there is persistence and one key i think i could see in all of this process and by Anne's experience in empowerment is to go into what you're doing with an aim to have people trained in a quality way that you'd soon be replaced. For me, that is empowerment. And that's what we're seeing with the SAT students who are now the tutors carrying on the work and making decisions for their own people making decisions for their community and for their growth. Thank you.